components that are connected in parallel have their own private circuit with the power supply or battery. So if this is a, a battery, that's our positive there, then we could have one component, maybe it's a resistor here, and that's got its own private circuit. But if we then branch off from there, and we have another component, another resistor underneath, this resistor also has its own private circuit. And that's a parallel circuit. And parallel circuits have a branching of the, of the wires, of the current. So the current will be flowing down here. Let's say there's three amps, and maybe two amps go down here, and one amp will go down here. It has to add up. So the three in equals the three out. Now why, you might ask, would two amps go down here and only one amp go into the middle resistor? Well, in this case, the middle resistor, it's, it's much harder for the current to go down it than it is for the bottom path. And so this might have a resistance of 10 ohms, but this one might have a resistance of 5 ohms. See, it's twice as easy to go down to the bottom path, so we have twice as much current going down than goes through the 10 ohms. So how does the voltage work? Well, let's say that this voltage of the battery is, uh, let's say, 6 volts. And if you imagine these coulombs of charge with backpacks of energy, 6 volts means that one coulomb has 6 joules of energy and they all line up, they're all going down in the flow of current and they get to the junction point and they split and some will go along the middle path and some will go down the lower path depending on the resistance of the components. Well, if they split, that means the current splits but the coulombs, say we have a coulomb here that's decided to come down this path, it still has a backpack full of 6 joules of energy, so 6 volts. So when it goes through this resistor, it will lose those 6 joules, get rid of its backpack of energy, and then it will return back to base. So across this resistor there are 6 volts, and across this resistor there are also 6 volts. Thinking about the same thing as a, a coulomb might go down this path, it still has 6 joules of energy in its backpack that it gives up to the resistor before returning back to base. So in parallel, the potential difference of the power supply is the same across all the components, but the current splits at the junctions and will come back again, recombine when the uh, when the, um, the the paths combine back together again, and would get three amps there, two amps there, and one amp here. Let's go back to this flashcard and see if we can make some sense of it. So, for components connected in parallel, the potential difference. the potential difference or voltage of the supply across each component is the same. 12 volts is applied across here and across there. Think of it like the temperature of water. If water, hot water was coming down here, there'll still be hot water here and there'll still be the same temperature water there. The total current going into a junction is equal to the total current coming out. So here we've got 3 amps and going into the junction and we've got 2 amps coming out. And let's see what that is now if we go down to the, the answer page. Okay, so 3 amps in and we've got 2 amps out. Well this must be 1 amp. It's a strange 1. That must be 1 amp. Because 1 plus 2 is 3, and they split at the junction. What about the voltage? Well, the voltage is the same. 
So the voltage here must be 12 volts. And here it must be 12 volts. So I'll leave you with a question. Do you think that your house electricity supply is wired, if you think all the bulbs and all the lights, do you think it's wired in series with the, the bulbs all one after the other? Or do you think it's wired in parallel where we've got separate circuits for each of the components?